Hi there, my name is Will and today we're going to look at the next part of the data engineering Zoom course where we can start using schedules and backfills to automate our pipeline. Jumping into Kestra, what we did previously was we built a Postgres pipeline that's able to create a table and a staging table. It's able to load data from a CSV file into that staging table and then merge it into our main table where all of the data will be, which meant we could get multiple months worth of taxi data and combine it into one table without any duplicates. Now, this is great and all, but we're gonna look at how we can automate that with a schedule and how we can fulfill backfills for schedules that were missed in the past. Now, this time our flow looks a little bit different. All we need here is an input for the type of taxi. Previously, we had the month and the year to go with that too. We don't need that this time because we're gonna use the trigger to automatically add that. Now, if we look down to the variables as well, you can see here that we have the same sort of principle where instead of putting the inputs in, we're getting the date directly from our trigger the trigger being the schedule that's gonna run this automatically. That's great and all, let's jump to the bottom of our code to see what that trigger looks like in a little bit more detail. Now at the bottom here, we have our two triggers. As we can see with this schedule, it's gonna run this every month on the first at 9 a.m. and the next one at 10 a.m. And we can see this by changing it, the cron expression in here to see what it's doing. Because we're only receiving data once a month from the New York taxis. So with that in mind, now we can just sit back and let this run and it's gonna run on the first of each month. But didn't we already talk about how the data is all from 2019 and 2020? That doesn't help us hugely because that's in the past. So that's where we can use backfills to help us by filling in the blanks that we don't already have. As we can see from the topology, the flow remains primarily the same other than we've got the two schedules at the top here. We're extracting that data from GitHub. We're performing all of the same operations for the yellow as well as the green before we purge the output files produced just to save a little bit of storage space in Kestra. If we head over to triggers, we can set up an at backfill execution, which means it will go back in time and execute for all those dates that we don't have. Because as we mentioned, we want to execute data for 2019, but it's 2025. So what we can do here is press backfill executions, select green, and then we can set the dates we want to cover. Now I want to cover all of 2019. So I'm gonna set the date to be the 1st of January, and then I'm gonna set the end date to be the end of December. Now it's worth noting that because the, the schedule is set to run at 9 a.m. on the 1st of the month, that's when it's gonna be looking to run those executions. So if you set it to the 1st of December without changing the time, then it will not run because it will be waiting for it to pass 9 a.m., which the backfill never will. Something else we can do is add a quick label to help us understand that this is a backfill. So we can look back in time and see which executions were from backfills and which ones were happening in real time. So with this in mind, I'm gonna press execute backfills. And now when I hit executions, we're gonna see here, it tells us which file we were using. So January, 2019. We can also see we're using the green taxi data set and we're using it through backfills. And we can see we're already onto our next backfill, which is February, 2019. If I now go over here, we can see that when I refresh our tables in PG admin, we can see that we also have the green trip data and green trip data staging. So we know that it's all working. Now, it's worth noting that we need to be able to run these one at a time because we only have one staging table here. Now, if we do want to run others, uh, we should create staging tables for each of the months. And as you can see here, I've just called it staging, but I could pass in that date trigger that we are using to get the file. We could pass that in here so that each time we run this, we're creating a separate table so we could run multiple at a time. But as you can see, I've set the concurrency limit to one, which means we can only run one execution of this workflow at a time to prevent multiple flows both writing different months to that staging table. And the reason that's so important is that we actually have a truncate for both of those. So what we want to avoid is making sure we're not truncating the table while another one is trying to create unique IDs. It will just get very messy and Postgres won't really know what to do. So there's a few things to think about there. Making it own unique table for each month is one way of doing it, but the problem that you encountered there is that now you'll end up with tons of months, especially how long your backfill will run. We're only doing 12 backfills, but if you were to do this for 
you know, 2020 as well, as well as the yellow data set, all of a sudden you've gained quite a few tables, which is not what you necessarily want considering those tables aren't very helpful, but you could drop the table once you're done with it rather than just truncating it. So something to bear in mind. Now, if we go back to the backfill, we can see that it's actually finished. And if I go to executions, we can see that it's done all 12 months of the year successfully. So now I think what we should do is go to the trip data and we should view this now to see that we've got all of the rows we were expecting. As you can see here, I've got data for the beginning of 2019 in January, and we can see we've got tons of that. There is quite a lot of rows here, which does make sense that we've got about 6 million rows here because there was about 60 to 50,000 in each of the CSV files. Now, if I go to the end, we'll see that we've got the December ones in there as well. So uh, very helpful. And as you can see, we do have unique row IDs for each of the rows, despite the vendor ID not always being there. And as you can see, the, the vendor ID is generated sometimes, but not always. So it's good that we've added that extra bit in in our previous example to account for those missing bits of data. Hopefully that has helped you understand how to manage both schedules, but also backfills inside of Kestra. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at how we can use a schedule to automatically run this as the data comes in. And not only will it run it automatically, we can run backfill so we can go back in time and pretend like this workflow was running in 2019, 2020, and 2021 to get all the data that is available there. So stay tuned for that where we can really automate this pipeline and make it work for us. We'll also have a bonus video on how you can use DBT with Postgres to be able to automate a little bit more of this process too. So stay tuned for that.